You know, I've been just about everywhere. A black hole, the depths of the Earth's core, my sister-in-law's wedding. Ooh, scary. But today's journey is especially dangerous and unusual. I want to test my capsule by going all the way from the coldest temperature on our planet to the absolute hottest. Alright, jump in and I'll tell you a little bit about this bad boy. My capsule is made with a special material that protects me from this insane temperature range we're about to experience. Hey, without this cutting-edge technology, my journey wouldn't even last a few seconds because right now, outside my ship, it's absolute zero. And to tell you what, it's eerie here. It's as if time has stood still. Usually, all atoms vibrate move around, interact, and do their daily work of making up you, me, and everything else in the universe. They create energy and heat from all that bouncing around. Absolute zero, what you're seeing now, is the temperature at which atoms stop moving completely. So naturally, things get really cold. Zero degrees Kelvin, hence the name. That's minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm glad to be inside this capsule right now. Absolute zero hasn't ever been reached on Earth, of course. It's purely theoretical. But scientists keep trying in the lab. In 2003, researchers at MIT managed to slow down mm. sodium atoms with the help of laser beams. As a result, they got the lowest temperature ever recorded, just a half a billionth of a degree above absolute zero. OK, so that was just one little atom. Surely objects can't get that cold. It seems my capsule is taking me to a hot tub-sized chunk of copper? It became the world record holder for the coldest thing on Earth after scientists chilled it to an unimaginable minus 459.659 degrees Fahrenheit. It was just six thousandths of a degree above absolute zero. So yeah, the atoms in this chunk of copper almost stopped moving. Good thing my capsule can... Uh, is that an icicle on my nose? I say that's a clear sign to move on. Minus 458 degrees Fahrenheit. We've officially reached 1 Kelvin. I can't imagine I'll find anything interesting this far on the cold side of the scale. But what's that thing moving over there? Is it alive? Get a little closer and you'll see it's a tardigrade. Also called a moss piglet or water bear. This microscopic animal might look cute but they're pretty much indestructible. They can survive under layers of solid ice, in stone walls, and even outer space. Now that we pass minus 458 degrees, helium can maintain its gaseous state, also known as it melts into a liquid at that temperature. Helium has a way lower density than air, which makes the gas rise. Yep, that's why your helium-filled balloons float above your head. <clears throat> Minus 361 degrees Fahrenheit. Gonna need to be extremely careful now, because I'm moving through the temperature where oxygen melts into a liquid. I don't know about you, but I can't breathe it like that. So let's get out of here. Ah, a bit warmer. And at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit, oxygen starts to boil. My lungs can't work with that either. Moving right along and far away from this danger zone. Oh, I imagine there will be plenty more. Sure hope nothing happens to my ship. If I could go to the dark side of the moon right now, my equipment would be showing a freezing temperature of minus 280 degrees. Think I'll stay right here on Earth. Now my equipment is showing minus 128 degrees. Ah, I see. It's the world record for the coldest air temperature recorded at ground level. It happened on July 21st, 1983, at the then Soviet Vostok station in Antarctica. Speaking of the Russians, the coldest habitable place on our planet is the village of Oymyakon in, you guessed it, Russia. On January 26, 1926, the temperature dropped to a staggering minus 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Psst, that's even colder than the average temperature on Mars. My equipment is showing minus 80 degrees, and it reminds me of the coldest temperature ever recorded in the US. It probably also comes as no surprise that it happened in Prospect Creek, Alaska oh. on January 23, 1971. By the way, what was the coldest temperature you've ever experienced, mm. and where was it? Let me know down in the comments. Oh look! 
I've reached the most unusual part of my journey. It's the point where the Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature scales meet. Exactly minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 40 degrees Celsius. Whew, both are still too cold for me. I guess I have a lot in common with my phone. It doesn't like extreme temperatures either. At minus 24 degrees Fahrenheit, the most cold-resistant cell phone starts to work again. If I didn't have my ice cream in the freezer, it'd be melting right now. It's 5 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and that's when some kinds of the cold treat start to turn into liquid disappointment. At 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going through the area where ice turns into water. I can see snowmen melting out there. Sorry guys, no room in the freezer, it's full of ice cream. <laughs> At least my capsule is thawing out a bit though. Going further, and I see the temperature is 55.4 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a shocking number because it refers to the lowest human body temperature ever recorded. But the real surprise is that this person survived and made a full recovery. Wow, the wonders of the human body. I'm sure you know that 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is the normal body temperature for a healthy person. Anything below 95 and you're hypothermic. If it's above 104, then the body gets fried down to the enzymes. Yeesh. My next stop is even hotter than that, at 115 degrees. That's the highest human body temperature ever recorded. On July 10, 1980, a 52-year-old man was brought to the hospital with heat stroke. Luckily, he survived too, and made it to the Guinness Book of World Records. Moving out of the human body range, I've arrived at the 159.3 degree mark, which is the highest surface temperature ever recorded on Earth. It happened in 2005 in Iran's Lut Desert. From the desert to the ocean, I can now see underwater hydrothermal vents out there. And will you look at that? Pompeii worms! These creatures were named after the famous city of Pompeii for a reason. They can withstand incredible temperatures of about 176 degrees. Besides tardigrades, hello again, these are the most heat-tolerant animals on Earth. Whoa, what's going on? My capsule is bouncing and jerking. It's like I'm riding on a bumpy road or something. Can't get to the signalization switch. Uh-oh, is this it? Has my capsule finally given up on me? I'm sorry I have to put you through so much. Just please don't give up on me now. Not down here at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, it was the water. It started boiling. Oh, I see. We reached 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when water begins to bubble. Whew! Almost lost my cool, but not quite. Just a couple of seconds later, and my capsule is traveling through a temperature of 257 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when any Intel CPU processor automatically shuts down. Keep your computer away from such temperatures, folks. Ooh, what was that? Sounded like a sonic boom. Ah, it was a Concorde flying by. The maximum temperature of the nose tip of this supersonic airliner can reach 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Too bad you can't fly faster than the speed of sound on one of these anymore. They stopped carrying passengers back in 2003. Is that tardigrades again? Sheesh, fellas, it's 303 degrees out there. Hey, when I said these microscopic bear pig things are indestructible, I meant it. At 674 degrees, mercury starts boiling. And isn't it a beautiful sight? Something silvery, outlandish, and extremely toxic just bubbling right outside my capsule. As you can see, my journey is getting more and more dangerous by the minute. How about I take it somewhere less threatening? Hey, do you really think the Formula One circuit is a safer place? Anyway, since I'm here, I'll tell you that the brake pads on a Formula One race car can reach a truly terrifying temperature of 1,380 degrees. Right now, I see some burning woods around my capsule, and it means that the temperature has skyrocketed to 1,800 degrees. But the heat from this fire is still colder than the hottest part of a candle flame, which can reach a pretty alarming 1,830 degrees. Note to self, never touch candles. The next temperature stop is 1,900 degrees, and it measures the heat of a volcanic eruption. Well, the lava spewing out of it, to be precise. And if I dive deeper into this volcano, 
I mean all the way down to the Earth's core. The equipment will show me a temperature of 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how hot the core of our planet is. Way to go, Earth! That's hotter than the surface of the Sun, which is only 9,941 degrees. Let's go to the hottest of the hot. No, not Miami, but close. The hottest temperature on Earth was actually human-made. It was created in 2012 by scientists at CERN's Large Hadron Collider. Inside the collider, lead ions were smashed into each other, going 99% of the speed of light. The resulting plasma that formed had an absolutely mind-blowing temperature of 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. That's 250,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. Whoa, keep your chocolate away from that if you don't want it to melt. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life!